Okay, we're going to work through uh, problem 22, page 343, chapter 11, where I'm looking to see if there has been a decrease in the number of crimes since a some kind of special program. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do in order to work this problem is I've got to set up my null and alternative hypothesis. Remember what I'm looking for, is there a difference? Is there a difference? So because of that, I'm going to set up my null and alternative hypothesis as HO is because I'm looking for a decrease. What we're saying is the state of nature as it exists is that after the program it will either have gone up or the same. What I'm trying to prove is that there has been a decrease in crime since the inauguration of the program. So because of that, I know for one that I'm going to be uh, testing at the lower end of the curve and that my alternative hypothesis is going to be a less than, my null hypothesis is going to be a greater than or equal to, because remember they both have to account for 100% of the possibilities. All right, step two is I've got to calculate D bar. The way I calculate D bar is I take the sum of the difference in the two conditions. In this case, I had before and after. And I'm going to take the difference. I'm going to divide it by N to come up with a value of D bar. And I won't say that I cheated, but what I did was I just put this in an Excel spreadsheet because I didn't want to subtract a bunch of numbers from one another. So what I ended up doing was I ended up going through, I simply took the before minus after, I got the difference, I did that all the way down, I got a negative 29 divided by my N of 8 because I had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, which was 8 observations or 8 areas and it gave me a D bar value of negative 3.625 which is the second step in this process. All right, so now I'm to the third step of the process, which is telling me that I need to calculate the standard deviation of the differences in the observation, or standard deviation of differences. And I'm going to use this formula right here, which is coming off of page 337 of your text. And let me just walk you through real quickly how I, how I did this. I, all of this is the same. I had my before, my after, and my difference. And I calculated d hat previously to be a negative 3.625. So all I did in this column right here was I took the difference minus d hat 3.625. And remember, this is the same way we did with the sum of the difference. Distance from the means always equals zero, so that was how I knew I did it correctly. So I simply took zero minus a negative 3.625 gave me this. Negative one minus a negative 3.625 gave me this. I did that all the way down this column. So the formula, though, says that I have to square it. So all I did here was I simply squared these numbers. This number, this number right here is simply negative 8.375 squared. 3.625 squared. 2.625 squared. And because the formula has this big sum, I knew that I needed to add them all together at the end. Again, I let Excel do all this math for me. Um, and I inserted this, which is actually the sum of d minus d hat squared. I substituted it right there. The de denominator, I had to have n minus 1. And I remember I had 8 observations, so that gave me 7. Remember, this is where I got the eight observations. This was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So I simply took 163.875 divided by 7, took the square root, and it gave me the standard deviation of the differences as 4.8385. Now I've got to go to my next step because I have now calculated, I've now calculated my d hat. I've calculated the standard deviations of the difference. Now I have to use formula 11-7 and calculate the value of the test statistic. In order to do that, I'm going to, ta-da, magic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this paired T formula, which is that formula 11-7, and I'm going to start substituting in. All right, we calculated a little bit earlier that D hat was negative 3.625. Just finished calculating the standard deviation, right, which is this S sub D, and then I have N of 8. So I ended up just doing a little math across here for you. Took the 4.83 standard deviation divided by the square root of 8. Came up with 1.7106. Divided that into d hat. Came up with a negative 2.119, which was approximately 2 point, negative 2.12, which gives me the calculated paired T value that I'm going to use for this hypothesis test. All right, the next step in this process, I'm down here to step five, and now I have to determine a critical value at alpha of 0 0.01. <coughs> Remember, this is a T test, right? A T test, which means I have to use degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is simply n minus one. So I go to my T table in the back of my book and I say at a critical value or an alpha equal to 0 0.01 with 7 degrees of freedom for a one-tailed test. Remember this is a one-tailed test. This was a one-tailed test that we set up at the very beginning. Remember one tail because I have a greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And according to, my, according to my table, I come up with a critical value of 2.998. Well, how do I know that it's negative? Because I'm testing here at that left-hand side of the curve. Remember, I'm testing at that left-hand side of the curve because I'm testing at, an, at that lower end. That's the negative side of the curve. So my critical value is a negative. 2.998. So just one or two steps to go and we're done. The next step is simply determining what my rejection criteria is. Based on the critical value, based on the critical value, if this t of negative 2.12 is, is less than negative 2.998, if t is less than negative 2.998, then I'm going to reject HO. So I'm going to compare my calculated test statistic to my critical value and then make my rejection or do not reject decision in this very last step. So here I am now with my final step to make the decision. Well, is negative 2.12 less than negative 2.998? No. So I do not reject HO because T is not less than T is not less than negative 2.998. So that's my final decision. So what I can conclude is there is not significant evidence or enough evidence to support at a 0.01 level of significance that there is a been a decrease, been a decrease right here, in the level of crime since the institution of this program. So I do not reject HO. I do not reject HO, and I move on to 
either changing my level of significance or collecting some more data. Um, I hope this helps. I've posted this document um, on the discussion board so that you can follow along with me. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Bye.